Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back for another MOOC review. This is going to be a great one for those of you who are 00 fans as this is issue 21 of GHL Gundam Hobby Life MS in 2307 AD. So it's all about mobile suits from Gundam 00 in this case. Really awesome MOOCs. If you guys haven't seen my past episodes on this series, go back and check some of them out. This is probably my favorite series of MOOC as they're always really super high quality. A lot of really great builds in there. They don't have the added filler of all the advertisements and all that stuff in there, which are sometimes nice in some of the older issues. It's interesting to go back and look at some of those, but a lot of really great stuff in here to enjoy. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so right here on the front, awesome cover design. It has a matte finish, but all the text is in gloss. So if you guys can see that, you can see how you're getting that gloss reflection on there. Very nice. In here, we've got 3D models, drawing data, lifestyle, information, animation, international, and column. All right, and this is 2,200 yen for the list price of this. That's the price plus sales tax, so 2,000 yen. So about 16, 17, 18 dollars, something like that. Not really too bad. As you can see, this is a pretty standard size MOOC. On the back here, an advertisement for Gundam Inlay. I feel like it's pretty commonly usually on the back of these. And inside here, we've got a thing about Gundam Witch for Mercury. This is a special thing in here about Witch for Mercury. Let's see, so this is kind of about the story, it looks like, about the animation. A little bit here about the Gundam Ariel. This is kind of interesting. And then getting into like the character, the HG model kits, uh, so Stiletta Mercury and her model kit. The aerial model kit and of course Naoki's custom build so if you guys didn't know Naoki is basically the uh, head designer what is it, his actual job title on this let me see he's the supervisor so he's basically in charge of Gundam Hobby Life like organizing it uh, curating it and everything and so although usually there's like at least one model if not multiple will be a build uh, by Naoki in there so it makes sense this is Naoki's version of the aerial here so it's interesting how it's broken out into days day one is I guess like so, a little bit of modifications there on that kind of before and after photos and oh this is still continuing day one I guess so this is all the modifications so I guess just kind of showing you this is sort of similar to what we were looking at before about like the uh, weekend modeler just like simple techniques to improve the look of the kit so uh, with all those modifications here's the before and after so it's basically a much better proportions in my opinion not quite so scrunched a little bit more stretched out which I can appreciate here's day two which is now painting so all of the parts that are painted here detail painting there a little bit of sanding I guess for some weathering on that oh, I'm not sure anyway but uh, yeah just sanding as needed uh, painting different parts it looks like that the entire kit is not painted entirely that just certain details are painted and the majority of the kit is left unpainted. Day three then is just uh, photographing, I guess, just documenting the final build. So taking some different poses, before and after shots again down there. I definitely think that I like the proportions better uh, with his custom build, but there you go. So we got that extra little bit added in there. Now we can get back to the book, a little advertisement over here for Gundam Seed Eclipse and our table of contents. Getting into this, starting off with the Exia, of course, which is featured on the front, and this one is by Naoki. So you can see, let's take a look here. So I think this is just gonna be an introduction here at the start, just kind of about the kind of backstory of Gundam Double O, it looks like. So there's like a little introduction to like the different factions and just kind of a very brief summary as to kind of what the story of Double O was about there. But here we got, this is the Master Grade Gundam Exia custom build, really nice modifications to this. I especially like the little details added, like these kind of details added up on the top of the torso and the top of the shoulders there. Those are really nice. It's definitely looking a lot more sharp. So it's definitely like kind of gone in and sharpened up all the edges on it, which looks really nice. Looks a bit more similar to the perfect grade in that sense. I think the perfect grade uh, is like that as well. It's a little bit sharper edges on it like, compared to the master grade, but I do also really appreciate the alterations to the color scheme as well especially the asymmetry up here at the shoulder looks nice just because it's it, in terms of it's like armaments and I guess this kind of goes for every mobile suit every Gundam uh, they're usually asymmetrical in terms of their armaments but this one definitely does look really nice uh, with the new coloring on that so we got a bunch of images of this all of the details and everything of that a bunch of detail shots let's see are we gonna see yeah there's gonna be a little bit of work in progress in here and then some text down here from Naoki about the build 
So the majority of books like this, uh, this series, it's going to be a lot of just like finished photos and there usually will be a little bit of work in progress and then a little bit of uh, text all in Japanese about each of the builds. And that's usually kind of generally how it goes with these. But all right, now we got the Dynamase, once again, based off of the Mastergrade Dynamase with a custom weapon here, obviously. I forget what that's called, but this uh, gigantic, massive gun that it's got. Uh, there's a resin kit of that, which I don't think that this is. And the resin kit, I believe, is for the high grade because it's an older one. Uh, so this is by Pu Kumagai. Really nice build here of this one as well. This one's got, I want to kind of skip ahead to the work in progress because just looking at it, this is one of those builds where it looks really nice and I'm sure that there's more modifications than what's immediately apparent because looking at this, it doesn't look that modified, but I think it's probably the case where it's got a fair amount of modifications in there. They're just going to be of the really subtle variety. They're not going to be as easily noticeable, but it looks like there's not much in the way of work in progress, so it's going to be hard to tell. Um, you, there's a little bit of work in progress over here, mostly about scratch building the new parts for that. But it looks like there's some uh, work done there onto the shields of it. And I'm sure there's a lot more different modifications, uh, more subtle here and there, like I said. But really nice build there of the Dynamis. And yeah, the cannon, that custom equipment is very cool. Interesting to wonder if we're ever going to get like a P-Bandai set, um, because I'm sure it would be P-Bandai if we ever did. But a P Bandai set here for this, for the Dynamase, it would be really cool, I have to say. I would definitely be into it, but I kind of doubt that we will. But it certainly would be awesome if Bandai were to make a, uh, a P Bandai set that you could get for the Dynamase to have that weapon on it. It would be really awesome. So it's got the weapon and then this big, giant, massive missile pod there on the back as well. Really, really cool. Would you guys buy that? If, the, if Bandai were to make that as a P Bandai set, would you buy it? Let me know in the comments. All right, now for the Curios, and then I guess up next after this, we're probably gonna have the Virtue, right? Yep, okay. So they're going in order of the Master Grade release of these, as you can see. So the Curios as well, really cool. Here, I love the red accent there on the gun. That's nice. I don't remember, does the original kit have that? I don't think the original kit is meant, or like the original like color scheme has that red on the gun, right? I don't believe so. You can see it's really, really small down there, but in the box art, it looks like it doesn't have that. So that's a nice little addition as far as changes to the color scheme go. Otherwise, this is again another example where it looks pretty much like it's built, you know, just out of box, but I'm sure there's a lot of really nice customization of the subtle variety. Let's take a look here. So you can see this is comparing the finished leg to the original leg, and it looks like he's made it a little bit longer, so the proportions are slightly extended and some details added onto the knee, for example. Yeah, that's cool. To make the knee look more like it's got like the flaps, like a wing would on like an air, airplane or something, and since it transforms, it makes sense. So to make the wings on the knees look more like wings, that's a really cool modification, actually. Yeah, something that maybe if I was sitting down staring at this for a while, I would notice, but just at a glance, it's stuff like that that you're not gonna notice. There's some definitely some custom scribing around on there as well that's done to this, but really cool. And I do like how the white is uh, more of an off-white. I believe it's like that with the base kit as well. It's not pure white, but it looks really nice here in the photos, that off-white with the orange. It's almost, it's really, really close, almost to that perfect color scheme of like the light tan, light gray, off-white color with orange and white and yellow accents, the perfect color scheme. Black accents on here as well to for that. This one modeled by Suezo, just for your guys' reference, but there you go, very nice. All right, and now the Virtue. So let's see, this one's modeled by Garma Zabiko. You guys should definitely be aware of Garma Zabiko if you're on Twitter following any Japanese modelers. I know he's got a pretty big Twitter following there and for good reason, awesome modeler, amazing modeler. And this one is a really nice build here of the Virtue and Nadle. There, so I'm guessing that this is two separate builds, but I don't know, I'm not sure, let's see. Is it two separate builds, or is it really just the one kit and it's just photographed as the Virtue and the Nadle? Maybe it is, hmm, interesting. If it was me and I wanted to make like a really nice build of the Nadle and a really nice build of the Virtue, I probably wouldn't do it all as a set just because I wouldn't want to be taking the armor on and off. And I guess maybe like if you're doing it just for a, a book like this, You'll need to put the armor on once, so you just photograph it, everything as the Nadle, and you put all the armor on, and you're not, don't have to worry about taking the armor off again, but 
I don't know. It seems like, you know, I don't know. If I was a professional doing this for a MOOC, I would maybe just make two separate builds, make it as the Nadle, and then make another one as the Virtue. But anyway, really cool there. Interesting, just like small little accent of like the yellow accents there on the back skirt. There, that also, not the big circles, but the smaller circles there in the center. Really nice little color point of interest right there. And then the Nadle. So yeah, I guess it is all just one build. There you can see it with the Nadle with all the uh, armor and everything equipment on it. Or laid out, I should say. So really nice. Okay. Now getting into, this is all, most of the rest of this I would imagine is probably going to be HG stuff now because that's kind of the extent of the, of like the main series master grades. Just kind of skimming through this, this is all HG stuff. Maybe one 100 scale non-grade, but anyway, this is the O Gundam. Really cool design. Uh, I've always been a fan. I have, I, I did finally build this kit uh, not that long ago, maybe like two years ago. And this is using that set. This was like a 30 minutes missions option set there for building the city. So it's just like a city uh, skate base that you can get. And actually, come to think of it, I don't know if it's specifically branded as 30 minutes missions, but it's just a, a base that Bandai came out with that you can make a cityscape. So kind of recreating the scene from the very beginning of Gundam 00 with the O Gundam kind of above the city there and this effect. It looks like he's just using his like computer monitor there for the effect at the back. So to get like this photo for it right here. And I've seen people do that uh, just for different photographs for different contests that I've had in the past, uh, especially for photo contests, people using their computer monitor to make a background uh, for their Gundam. And you certainly can do that to great effect, as you can see there with this particular example. So that's really cool. And then adding some like light and smoke down here onto the base, just to make it like, look like there's like fires and explosions going on in the city. So that's pretty cool as well. I've got an idea. I've got a, a couple of these sets for a particular idea that I want to do uh, with a, using a base, the base like that for a custom kind of diorama vignette kind of scene. So that's a future work in progress. Anyway, speaking of work in progress, here's some work in progress on this particular kit. So like about the LEDs, about filling in some of the gaps because it is an HG and especially an older HG. Uh, it does have some hollow gaps here and there. You can see, so we had to fill all those in and doing some other little modifications. So really nice build there. A cool kit, definitely. All right, up next, we've got the Throne Eins. Another cool design. I've always been a fan of the Throne series and thought they were uh, pretty cool Gundams from the show. That said, I found the HGs, um, they're not that great. I feel like it would be nice to get new HGs or even better, like Master Grades. I don't think that's gonna happen, but maybe, Maybe these could be good candidates for the next series of full mechanics kits. So right now we're getting like the Raider and the Calamity and the Forbidden Gundam from Gundam Seed as uh, 100 scale full mechanics kits. Maybe we could get the Throne series as the next series of full mechanics in 100 scale. That would be really awesome, actually. And that would make a lot of sense. I feel like just looking at what Bandai's done with the recent series of full mechanics kits, then moving on to Gundam 00 and making these, I think would be really, really cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, of the HG kits, I just think that they're cool designs, but the proportions and details of the HGs are not great, and they could definitely be a lot better. They could do a lot more justice to the particular mobile suits with some new or updated versions of those kits. And so this is a really nice build here of the Throne Eins. We got a little bit of work in progress done here, but I can tell there's definitely a good amount of work done on this to get it to look as good as it does. And it's got that really nice kind of very dark brownish red metallic uh, paint there used for that. As you guys may know, I'm not usually a big fan of like metallic paint jobs, but this one does uh, suit the Gundam really nicely. It looks really cool on there, yeah. Okay, next we got the Throne's Way. This one as well also looks really, really nice. Let's see who these are by. Oh, this one's by Early Chop. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, this one here is by Suo Ray on Twitter. And once we get to the end here, there's like his uh, text down here and then a profile about him and his Twitter ID is there. But this is a re another really nice build and another just great example, like I was saying, where like the kit itself, in my opinion, the kit straight out of the box, not that great looking kit, but even with kits that are not that great looking straight out of the box, there's a lot of potential because this build looks amazing. Really, really nice build here of this kit and just goes to show, you know, with the good amount of work, you can make any kit look good 
and it's certainly the case with this one. It looks really, really nice. So yeah, now, now that I've got that in my mind, and I'm just really thinking about, oh, here's a good example. Right here you can see the before and after, the original kit versus the custom build. Um, so yeah, looks nice. And now I'm just really thinking like, man, these are such perfect candidates for the next, uh, for the next full mechanics releases from Bandai. So, wow. Oh, I've got something in mind for when we get that question, when I'm doing the live streams with Adam, uh, on the USA Gundam TV YouTube channel when we do our live streams and answering your guys' questions. Sometimes we get questions like, what do you guys think the next MG is going to be? Or what do you think the next full mechanics kits might be? And now when I get that question, I know exactly what to say for the answer because I think it's a really, really good path for Bandai to take for the future releases, for the next couple of releases anyway, for that line. Now we got the Throne Dre, so the last of the three. So this one's another really cool design just because it's got such a unique head design there. Obviously, they all, all three have really unique designs which is one thing that I really like about them. The Arc Gundam is probably my favorite uh, though, and I would really love a 100 scale version of that as well. But I mean, these would be really great just because of how unique the designs are on them. So really cool build here of this. Who's this one by? This one's by Wanda Maru. Not a name that I'm familiar with, but if he's on Twitter, I would say probably I'm following him. I'm just not familiar with the name. Don't remember the name, but really beautiful build there of that and again we have a little bit of work in progress at the end that's one thing that i i love this series the only thing that i wish it had is a little bit more work in progress like maybe this whole last page and i'm sure that's the thing is like there is more information about it and there's information here in japanese but it would be nice to just be have like maybe this full last page of photos be all work in progress photos at least i think just a little bit more of that would be nice in my personal opinion. I mean, there's different MOOC series that focus more on on uh, showing more work in progress photos and some that show less, like the Gundam Archives, for example. But anyway, there's plenty to enjoy in here. This is the Union Flag. This one is another one by Naoki now. So this is another really cool design. Gundam 00 is a series that, I mean, a lot of people love this series. For me, it's not a series that I love, but I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this series well enough. It was a fun series to watch. I haven't seen it for a long time. I should probably watch it again at some point, but uh, I do like a lot of the mobile suit designs. It's got a lot of really uh, creative and unique designs in there. And that's something I guess you can say about a lot of different series, but um, there's a lot of really cool designs in Double O. This is another really great example of that. So the 100 scale version of the flag is also, which I think is maybe this one. Yes, this is what we're going to see next, the over flag. Uh, so we'll see that in just a moment. But anyway, just to focus here on Naoki's Union flag. Really nice build here of this. I really like how he went with the more gray tone for the main color of it as originally. It's more of a like, light bluish gray and he really toned down the blue. And it makes it look more kind of like an aircraft being just blue. Oh, so here you can see like that's the original color of the kit and then his version here. So making it more gray like that makes it look less like a cartoony robot and more of like an actual like aircraft robot, a robot that actually transforms into some sort of aircraft. So I really like that kind of makes it look more realistic in a way. This kit, I love this kit. The Overflag, the 100 scale non-grade kit is such a nice kit. I can highly recommend it to you guys. This and the 100 scale Tyran, actually all of the non-grade 100 scale double O kits uh, in my experience, they're really, really quite nice. I mean, as far as 100 scale kits go, I mean, they are just like large HGs essentially, uh, but they're really nicely detailed and they come with a lot of great stuff in there. So, um, but this one in particular and the Tyran are probably the best in my opinion, but it's really nice. So this one transforms, of course, it's got all the details on there. They're really nicely detailed. They're kind of very similar to like the RE100 line and the full mechanics line. These are kind of like the precursors to that where you have these kits that on the outside, they look like master grades. They just are very simple. Of course, they don't have a full inner frame or anything like that. They're not nearly as complex or anywhere near like a master grade, but they kind of have the appearance of a master grade just with all the details they have on them. So RE100 slash uh, full mechanics before those were a thing. Um, these were kind of already doing that in this particular line. So really, really nice kit and so cool with that black color scheme on that. Again, it kind of has that very like realistic aircraft vibe to it, but in black just kind of makes it look that much more cool, right? So the visor is such a cool effect on that too. All right, then we got some more flag action here. This is the Enact demonstration colors and another really interesting one. This one's more now again, leaning back towards uh, the more like colorful designs with this right really nice like turquoise blue color 
on that. It looks really cool. Another really great design. I've never built this kit. Uh, I actually never built the Union flag either. Uh, these are a couple of HG kits. I haven't built a whole lot of HG00 kits really, to be honest, but this is one uh, that would be cool to check out. Not necessarily a big fan of the gun, but the mobile suit design itself is so cool. It's so alien looking, right? It's very interesting, very unique. It, I mean, it just doesn't look like something that you would expect to see out of a Gundam uh, series. All right, and here is the 100 scale Tyran. A really detailed kit on its own, but this is a much more detailed up version of it, definitely. So this is really nice that it's modeled up more of like a Votoms kit or something, like a 120 scale Votoms kit. It's kind of what this looks comparable to, just in the weathering on it. It's got a lot of really nice subtle weathering. This one is by Bud, by the way. And then all the little details added on it, because the design of the Tyran is already kind of designed very much sort of like a walking tank. And he's kind of really leaned into that with adding a lot of like little greebly parts and detail parts and stuff like that to make it look really like a walking tank. You've got kind of these uh, added armor panels onto here, like active armor on the front of those knee shields that it's got. It's got these um, stern foss there on the back. You got a lot of really nice close-up detail images here of this. So really great inspiration. I mean, if I have this kit and I've not built it, so I need to build mine. And so whenever I get around to building my kit, and if I wanted to build it up kind of in this style, this is a really great reference for just like where to add certain different types of details and things like that. Adding like these pistons there in the back of the feet looks super cool. Just all these details look really nice. And I like how like the uh, decals, which is not something that I've really talked too much about with any of these builds really and at all, the decals, but the decals on this one are especially nice. You have a couple of like the really large ones and you have like the stripe uh, markings on there, the color bands, and you have like the big 005 on the front and the back, but then a lot of other smaller, much more subtle uh, markings just for small little decals here and there that look really nice on this build. So really, really cool. And just all the armaments on it are looking really nice. I'm not sure about that bazooka. I wonder if that is just something that's scratch build or something, because I don't think that the kit has that. I would have to go back and check. As far as I can remember, I don't think that that looks familiar to me that the original kit includes. I know it has this gun on the arm, but I don't think it has the bazooka. I'm just curious about that now, if that's maybe something that's scratch built. But here's a couple of work in progress photos down here where you can see just what's all added to it. So you can see like the base kit is there in green and all this little like gray and tan colored stuff is just all stuff that's added onto there. So really, really nice build here of that. Probably my favorite of the MOOC so far. But here we have the Space Tyran, a Tyran Tauzi, I should say, which is modeled off of the 100 scale. So there is a HG version of this kit, but this is actually a, a custom build using the 100 scale. So this is a 100 scale version of that. So that had to have been a lot of customization to convert that. Cause I mean, some parts would be the same, but I know there's a, quite a lot different about the build. And this one is by Komenda. So let's take a look here. Let's see, just kind of skip ahead here first to the work in progress. So here you can see uh, the work in progress image of that, where it's got just a lot of stuff scratch built onto that. The feet, the chest, the shoulders, all these, like the shoulder, the top part of the arms, and then the whole like shoulder shield parts, of course, all that part up there. Can't say that I'm a huge fan of the color scheme for this particular design, but it is a really unique design. Um, this is another one that I'd like to build HG at some point, but it would be nice if we got a nice 100 scale version of it like this as an actual model kit. It would be awesome, but really cool build there. And it has a really cool gun design there as well. So, all right, I think we got maybe just a couple left here. And this is getting away from Gundam 00. Now this is uh, Naoki's custom build here for the genius headline of the camper. So as far as I know, uh, Naoki tweeted something about how this is going to be an official release from Bandai. Not always, some of these stuff, some of the stuff that's built like for the books and whatever is just a custom build that's just made for the book and it's not actually going to be something that goes into production. But I think I saw that something that this was supposed to be coming out as a P Bandai kit in the future and maybe it still will but at this point we haven't seen any uh, update on that so I'm not sure if this is still going to be coming out as a kit that's going to be available to buy. It's just basically the Master Grade Camphor but just with a lot of different parts on it. I wonder if there would just be so much different about this kit. I mean, just taking a look at it, it's like every armor piece, I mean, there's probably like 10% of the armor or less of the original camper that could be reused for this. I mean, this is all new pieces that would be required 
for making this. So it's a really cool build though. Definitely a really interesting take on the camper. What do you guys think about it? I think it's pretty interesting, definitely. Uh, of course, the black color scheme looks pretty cool, but just all the different design changes to it I think are really unique. So here's a look at some of the other releases that were from this genius headline. So you got like the Polypod Ball, uh, the Cubelade Damned, and different versions of that, like the Gundam Stormbringer, Hyakushiki Crash, and just a few others there. So a lot of really cool uh, releases have come out from this line. Of course, they're all premium Bandai, but it kind of makes sense as they're all just like different variants of different kits and like just nothing official, nothing from any particular Gundam series or anything like that. Okay, here's a look at Gundam Hobby Life uh, and armor modeling. So we actually, in a previous episode, we took a look at this uh, issue here from armor modeling. And was this, yeah, this diorama was not featured in that issue as far as I can remember. But I guess this is maybe just kind of, just because of the nature of this, even though it is still Gundam, it is kind of so much more like an armor modeling project. I believe this is all in 1 35th scale. So this is using the uh, 1 35th scale Rambaral Commando set, which includes uh, some character figures and then also the 1 35th scale version of the Zaku head. And this is really interesting just how it's kind of set up here and it's even got like the palm tree like growing out of the head. And of course it's like damaged. You have the damaged neck parts there and you have like riding on it so kind of using the zaku's head here as like a road sign it's kind of interesting so very cool diorama yeah it's really really nice quite interesting so this is by kazuya yoshioka uh, really cool jaeger here for this so we got a lot of work in progress kind of showing the different elements that went into creating this here for the diorama really really nice Cool, this is something quite unique and interesting there. This is a new segment here. So this is build the old Gunpla kit series. So this is the 1-100 scale uh, Zeta Gundam. I guess the original like 80s version of the 1-100 scale Zeta Gundam. And this one is fitting since we have the Verka just around the corner, of course, the release of that. So I'm sure that's the reason why this particular model was selected for this segment. But I believe this is the first time that they've included this segment in uh, a GHL this build the old Gumpless kit series, but it's certainly something that's a really cool idea, something to add into here. Cause of course we have all these different builds and most of these kits that are featured in here are old. Like the Virtue is probably the most recent one. The rest of these are at least somewhat older, uh, but it's cool to take a look back at like a really old kit like this, which I believe is from 1980, it would be 1980, Five, I think is when this kit is from. So right here shows you what the original kit looks like. And yeah, it has such a huge, gigantic boxy chest. So he had to do some major modification uh, to this to make it to look as good as it does. I mean, and, and it's still at the end of the day, still, I mean, looks like an older kit, still has that feel and it still has that uh, design to it. But I mean, there's a lot of work to this. Here on this page, we've got some of the modification you can see to this. So it looks like there's a lot of scratch building built into this to make it transform, it looks like. Is that what's going on with this? Yeah, it looks to be like the case. Like, and I'm sure that the transformation, uh, the way that it's built and the way that it's modified to be able to transform is very simplified from like a master grade, for example. But the fact that he built it to be able to transform is pretty impressive. So all this modification, everything that needed to go into that. And it's all just done like with plot play and brass pins and everything like that. It's pretty incredible. So the fact that it can transform all the way to the Wave Rider mode is really, really cool. Very impressive. Very interesting. All right. Next up, we got MS in Enhanced Landscape here, modeled by Mizuki Takumi. This is the Juagu Depressa. I'm not exactly sure what this is, if it's anything that's like official or canon at all, but you have this Juagu with this big massive ship container here on the back of it. I'm not really sure what that is or what that's supposed to be. Uh, let's see if we got some more photos here of this. So yeah, I guess it's just a, like a weapons container. It has missiles on the top and then on the, on the side, it's got a sword. Kinda like, and I'm guessing there's one on both sides maybe, but like a sword's stored on the side. Very interesting. The Juagu is certainly like a really unique design, of course. And also, okay, this is also really cool. It's got, instead of like the three fingers, I think it usually has three, is it three or four? I love like the finger cannons. 
It's got cannons on the hands, and then it also has just regular hands like in between the two cannons. So it's got two cannons on the sides of like the wrist essentially, or the forearms, and then two cannons up here at the um, like shoulder. Really, really unique. Wow, it's quite interesting. And yeah, these missile uh, bays there on this kind of submarine attachment that it has, it looks like. And it's cool how it's like showing how it separates from that. And then so here it is uh, with just the arms without the cannons attached. So you can see like where the cannon attach onto the arms. Really unique. Really, really cool. That's pretty incredible, I gotta say. Super creative build here of the Juagu and like the everything for that. So you can see some work in progress of everything that was scratch built and everything for that. Very interesting. I like it a lot. All right, last thing here is the WCC Moke Club uh, with Wild River. That's pretty interesting there. This is all going to be just in black and white here for this section, just some photographs and text of some different stuff from like a club meetup, I guess. That's what this was. Here's some with uh, Budasan. And here's a write-up talking about this build here with the GHL armor modeling collaboration between Naoki and the creator. And this one, this one was in that armor modeling issue, if I remember correctly. So it's a bit about that. Uh, some more Gundam Hobby Life text here with some of the different contributors, Naoki, Pooh, etc an advertisement for Robot Hobby Life. So we took a look at the first issue of Robot Hobby Life and I've seen just this past week, uh, the second issue of Robot Hobby Life went up for pre-order. So if you guys liked the first issue and you want to make sure that you get the second issue, uh, you can. You should be able to pre-order that from wherever you typically like to pre-order your MOOCs from or order your MOOCs from if you do. Uh, you can check that out just a heads up for you guys so you don't miss it, but the second issue is on the way. And it's uh, Macross themed, or at least the, the cover of it is Macross themed, and the, that's going to be uh, kind of the main theme of it. I'm sure we'll see lots of other different stuff in there. But all right, there's a little bit here about F90FF on the last page, and that's going to do it for this issue of Gundam Hobby Life, a really great issue. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite build in there. Mine's probably definitely going to be the Tyran. Uh, it was such a cool build, but there was a lot of really great stuff in there, especially, again, if you're a double O fan, there's a lot of stuff to enjoy. If you guys want to check out some model kits for yourself, particularly all the new Witch from Mercury HG kits, you guys can check the link in the video description to US at Gundam Store. We've got all sorts of different stuff in there for you guys, model kits, paints and tools, supplies for you to make some really cool custom creations like what we've seen in the MOOC here. So check out that link. If you guys want to see some more episodes in the future, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe. Thank you all so much for all of your support. Really appreciate it. Have a great week, guys. And we'll see you with the next MOOC review next weekend. Bye, guys.